Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and today we're going to begin a journey talking about the software program called MATLAB. And uh, MATLAB is a, is a software program that pretty much any student in the science or engineering field is going to have to use at some point or another. And it's also a software program that's used by pretty much almost every professional engineer out there from mechanical engineers to electrical engineers to computer engineers. Uh, it's just a super versatile um, platform to do your work. And so that's why most students end up using it during a class at some point, and you'll be expected to kind of know how to use it once you get out into the, uh, into the real world. Now, at, at its core, MATLAB does math. It lets you do things like, you know, complex calculations and uh, matrix math, calculus, uh, and so on. It also has a lot of really powerful plotting functions built into it. Uh, but more than any of those things, so up to this point I've told you things it can do that sort of make it behave like a calculator. It's a super powerful calculator. I can type things into this window and get answers, right? It's a calculator. But more than that, it is a very powerful programming language. So it combines all of the power of, of the, the math engine with the power of a, of a really sophisticated programming language. So I can write my own programs and store them in different files and make very complicated um, math simulations of whatever it is I'm trying to do. And that's really what makes MATLAB work and what makes it powerful. And at the end of the day, when I've done my my computer programs and I've simulated what I'm trying to do and I've, I've got my answers it has some of the most powerful plotting features of any program ever built so I can make three-dimensional plots two-dimensional plots scatter plots and, and just look at it in different ways so what we want to do in this section is ease our way into it MATLAB is uh, has thousands of functions that 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 uh, are available for you to use and so what we're going to do is is to crawl before we can walk what we're going to do in this section is just do an introduction to the user interface to all these windows here it looks a little bit intimidating when you fire it up and if you work with me through through all the lessons that follow we'll go through the functions the core functionality and before long you'll get confident with MATLAB it's not that hard to use to be honest with you but it is intimidating so when you fire up MATLAB, this is the screen that you typically have. And by the way, I'm using the latest version of MATLAB. So um, you, your version may, by the time you watch this video, it might look slightly different. Um, if it looks slightly different, don't worry about it. The, the things that we're going to type in here to get it to work are all going to work just fine for you, even if your layout looks slightly different. Here we're uh, confronted front and center with what we call the command window. This is where we type things into MATLAB, and MATLAB gives us answers. So just as an example, you know, 2 plus 3. You can think of this as a calculator window. 2 plus 3, hit the Enter key, uh, it gives us 5. Notice a couple of things happened as soon as I hit the Enter button. It says A and S, that means answer, equals 5, right? At the same time that this happened, we had some activity on this side of the screen. Immediately we popped up in the workspace window, it says A and S, and it says the value is 5. And over here down below, the command history popped up with 2 plus 3. Now I'll tell you what these uh, windows are really for in a minute, but before we go any farther, let me type a few more things in. I think you'll get the hang of what's going on. 4 plus 4. Let me go ahead and hit enter. It gives us the answer is 8. And over here, it updated this A and S with a value of 8, and it tells us now that we've typed in 4 plus 4. And I'll just do one more here. 10 minus 7 uh, times 13. I can string these things along. Of course, MATLAB understands sign, uh, uh, order of operation, so when we do this, it's going to do the multiplication first, and then it's going to do the subtraction because that's the rule of the rules of algebra. So we're going to hit enter. We're going to get an answer of negative 81. Again, it updates the value of A and S to negative 81, and it tells us what we just typed in. So by and large, the most important thing for you to remember and understand is that the command window is where you type everything in and MATLAB gives you answers. It labels the answer with A and S. Okay, this workspace window up here, as we work more and more with MATLAB, is going to become very important. What it is, is a list of variables um, in your session, in your, in your current working environment. That's why it's called the workspace. The only variable that we have right now is A and S. That's, that, that variable is just generated by MATLAB. It holds the, whatever the last answer is of what we've done. So first of all, 
the last answer was 5 because that was our first calculation. And then the last answer was updated to be 8. And then the last answer was updated to be 81. It constantly gets updated depending on what we type in. That's why the value of ANS kept changing over here. So basically, this is a list of variables. Right now, we only have one. This is the current value. As we type in more stuff, the value of the last answer is going to be updated. It's constantly telling you the value.